What is up ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to share you what I have learned in the past 20 years of being an engineer. Right. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I get a lot of questions, of course, right? people are asking me a lot of questions. I see people, a lot of people taking the wrong decisions, the wrong road paths. And most of all, I think most of you are a slave of the tech community, right? You're basically hunting meta to meta to meta, right? Uh, oh, there is a new language. I want to have a job there. We're going to learn that language. Oh, there is another framework coming out. We're going to learn that framework. Oh, uh, I don't like React. I'm going to do Svelte and, and, and so on, right? So basically, if you're a developer, if you're an engineer, you're going to have a career path, right? And that's going to be a timeline. You're going to start your career path and hopefully it's going to be a long lasting career. You know what I mean? Full of happiness and joy. You know what I mean? And what you're going to do, most of the time you're going to start with some kind of a language. Everybody needs to start somewhere. Most of you will probably have some background in C or Java or something if you're coming from uni, which is nice to have. I think especially if you have a C++ or a C background um, or very proficient in it, I think that's a superpower to have because then you actually know how computers work, how memory work, how memory is moving and all that stuff. Very important to be honest. Um, but nonetheless, it doesn't really matter. You're going to start with some kind of a language. Could be PHP for most. Uh, that's how it started with me. PHP, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, whatever, right? And as your career progresses, you're going to be on Twitter, you're going to be on YouTube, you're going to be on Reddit. And I don't think that's a good thing, uh, especially if you're young and you're very influential, right? That's, that's basically what we are, what I am. We are influencers. That's what they call us. And we want to try to influence you so we can sell something to you. You know what I mean? I'm going to be completely honest here. Um, and so you're going to see these things on Twitter like, oh, there's a new, a new framework and you're going you're gonna to learn that new framework and then uh, something else comes, a new language, I don't know, a Gleam, what it's today, Gleam, and then it's Rust and, and you have... Uh, Zik and all that stuff, you're going to learn all these languages, you know what I mean? Um, and you're going to hop metas from the moment they basically are being created, right? But the problem is, guys, I was just like you, right? It's, it's, it's a phase, right? Every, in your life, you're going to have phases. And I, in my opinion, it's not bad that you're going through these phases. But what I want to do is to basically warn you that you probably or you most likely going to do the wrong thing, in my opinion. Right. So you need to understand that the moment you're basically going to learn a new meta, right? The moment you're going to learn a new meta, that's what's going on here. That's the moment you're already shot yourself in the foot because these metas, they're basically coming as fast as you learn them. You know what I mean? The moment you're going to start learning a new framework, a new language, it's already too late because something else is coming up, right? You know what I mean? And you're going to jump to this one. And the moment you learn this one, it's already too late because there is a new one. You know what I mean? And this is going to block your whole career because you're going to do this thing. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be back to PHP, back to JavaScript, and it's gold, and it's rust, and then it, you know what I mean? It's going to be an endless rabbit hole. And it's never bad to learn new frameworks it's never bad to learn new languages but the most important thing is that all this stuff guys right? and like i said this is this is a video without any uh ads without any course selling shenanigans it's just from me pure to the heart to you guys all this stuff here right is noise noise golang javascript typescript PHP, Python, React, SvelteKit, it's, 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 it's super base and, and that other thing that just removed their free tier, planet scale. It's all noise. This is not what it's, what matters. They, 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 they don't matter. If they, if they blow up tomorrow, nobody cares. That's what, that's what it needs to be in your, in your mind. If, if tomorrow Golang explodes, it's not big of a deal. You know what I mean? What does matter is this, guys. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. This is a flag. <laughs> this is what matters, right? And this is basically the goal or the solution, right? Because 
a lot of people are coming into programming because they see it on TikTok, they see it from they, they hear it from friends, they think it's cool because we can wear a hoodie and a headset and we can watch, uh, we can listen to music and we can be oh, coding and it's nice and we are hackers and and. But I'm gonna tell you something. After a certain time. This is going to be exactly the same feeling as any other job on the planet. You know what I mean? At a certain time, and it's not only with programming, it's, it's, it's a life lesson. Everything becomes boring at a certain point of time. Right? It's the same with relationships. You have a 10 years marriage that, comes, that becomes boring. And then you think that the grass is greener on the other side and you're going to break up because some, some beautiful girl is there. But she's going to be beautiful and she's going to be amazing for six months. Right? And then it's just back to the beginning. You know what I mean? That's what it is. The grass is never greener on the other side. Of course, there are edge, 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 edge cases, of course. But in general, the grass is never greener on the other side. That's an illusion. And the grass is always greenish because we are bored. Right? And it's the same in programming. Because if you write PHP for six years you're gonna be bored <laughs> you're gonna be bored as fuck you know what i mean it's it's gonna be a job like 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 anybody else like somebody is selling burgers at mcdonald's somebody is basically uh stamping papers uh, each day you know what i mean counting sausage, sausages <laughs> it's the same thing everything becomes boring what you need to learn guys is that you need instead of having joy Instead of having, because like I said, if you're writing JavaScript for five years and then suddenly, oh, Rust, wow, Rust gives me so much dopamine. It's such a joy to work with. Our engineering team is so pleased. They are so happy that we can use Rust. They are so productive. No, oh, they were bored. That's what it is, right? And now they are productive, right? But in six months, they're going to shoot themselves in the fucking foot. You know what I mean? Back to TypeScript. You know, that's, that's, that's the circle, circle of life. Instead of having joy out of your noise, right? instead of getting dopamine out of your Vim configuration, instead of getting dopamine about your closures and your old camel bullshit, you need to find joy in your goal and your solution. Because this is where the money is. Right? And it's not about money, I understand, but who doesn't like money? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is where the money is, right? Your goal and solution should be your main driver of your reward system. The goal and the solution should be something that you want to chase time after time after time. It's your high. It's your cocaine. You know what I mean? And if you change your mindset on your goal and solution, everything becomes clear in your path. Because you're not going to care about the noise anymore. Of course, noise is important here, right? These languages are important, right? But if you, take about, if you think about a goal and a solution, <clears throat> if you think about efficiency, right? if you think about life as a business, you don't, even though you're not uh, an entrepreneur or you're not self-dependent of something, it doesn't really matter. Life is always a business. You want to do some things the most efficient way in the least amount of time. You know what I mean? That's what you want. That's, what, uh, that's basically what every CEO or CTO is looking for. They are looking for developers that can do stuff as efficient as possible in the least amount of time and come to a solution. That's important. And it doesn't matter if you pick something from this, right? It doesn't matter if you use Golang or PHP or JavaScript or Elixir or Ruby or Python. It doesn't really matter. Right? You pick something that you're just proficient in. That, you're, that you master. Because people, I, can, I see a lot of conversations where people move languages because they, they, they think they're going to get being paid more. Right? Oh, I'm, I want to be a going developer because I'm going to get more, more money. I'm going to be a Rust developer because they're going to pay me more. If that, if that is your, of course, you want to make money. I understand that. I want to make money as well. Right? Everybody wants to make money. But this is the bad driver. You know what I mean? That's the, 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 the worst driver you can ever have. Because what you're going to do is you're going to cock block yourself, right? Because you're going to learn a language for 30% and then you're going to learn another language for 20% and you're going to learn another language uh, for 10% and then, oh, this is not good enough, you're going to take this language. Well, look at that, it's bending even. You know what I mean? 
And you're never going to be proficient. You're, you're always going to be frustrated. You're always going to have questions. Nothing is going to be clear. You're not going to see the patterns. You're not going to see the building blocks. Because, and they are in every single language the same. All these patterns, all these ways of constructing something, letting your imagination, letting your creativity to work to come to a solution, and then make it better, and even maybe then make it faster. That's in every single language the same. And if I need to make something for a client, if I need to make something for my, for my company, or you need to make something for your company, as fast as possible, you most likely are going to pick the wrong language because you're getting your dopamine from that language and you're not getting your dopamine from the goal. And that's why you want to pick the wrong noise. You know what I mean? And that's for everybody different, right? Like I'm very proficient in goaling because I stick with goaling for 10 years already, right? I saw goaling, I, th I thought it was amazing and I, I'm using this for, for all the time, right? That's why I'm very proficient in it. Does it mean that you need to pick Golang? Of course not. You can pick something else. It doesn't really matter. I would pick PHP, for example. Why not? Because, again, it's all about your goal and solution, and that's where it really, really matters. Right? That's where CEOs and CTOs and companies uh, are looking for, where co-founders are looking for. They're looking for goal-getters, for problem solvers. Right? Because you can be the best engineer in the world. Right? You can be so proficient in your language, you could be, you know, everything about pointers, speed, heap, stack, closures, structure, but you can still be, you can still suck. You can still be a bad programmer. Why? Because you're focusing on the noise, but that's not needed. You need to focus on your goals. You need to focus on the solution. You need to focus on problem solving. That's basically what I want to tell you guys. You could say there's a lot of bullshit, but it's not. Trust me. I learned. I learned the same. In this, I, I learned the mistakes, right? I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, you need to do your very, very, very best if you want to make as much mistakes that I made in my life. And still of today, I make them professionally, but also in life with friendships and relations, right? Making mistakes every single day. And I need to learn from them, right? And sometimes it, it takes three or four mistakes, the same mistakes, and able to learn from them. You know what I mean? I just want to warn you, pick the right tool for the right job. Don't be a slave of the meta because they are, it's changing every single day. Today it's A, tomorrow it's B, and next year it's A again. You know what I mean? And focus on your goal and your solution. And I swear to God, your future will be much brighter than it is right now. See you soon.